Hello and welcome to another episode of Webflow and Code where I teach you the underlying code you're writing in Webflow. Today we're going to be looking at focus states and the importance of why we should be using them. On this channel, I talk about the fundamentals of web development and how to apply them to your web flow projects. So if you're new to the channel, then please make sure you subscribe and then you can hit the bell notification so you get updated when I release new videos. So in Webflow, you might be familiar with the hover state of an element. And you do that by, in your Webflow uh, style inspector, you can select a link and I have a project that's set up here. You have a link here and you can go to hover. And then you can set your styles that you want to uh, happen when a user hovers over that element. So this is awesome for people that use a mouse, but it's wrong to assume that everyone is actually using a mouse. Users like myself like to use the keyboard to navigate through forms or just web websites in general, so that I don't have to reach on mouse and move around and, and various things like that. But more importantly, users that have certain motor skills or visual impairments also will use your website using uh, the keyboard. Or on the iPhone, it might they might use the, the built-in accessibility features for that, in which case they don't have a mouse. These users don't choose to not use a mouse, so it's important that we cater for them when building websites. Uh, a mouse is harder to track, it's harder to understand where you are on the page, especially when you're zoomed in, which a lot of visually impaired users are, they have the screen quite big, so having a mouse moving around is, is, is really difficult for them to use. So a hover event is actually quite difficult and uh, it can be quite difficult to, to see. That's where the focus state comes in handy. And you find this in the same location under where you find the hover. And for most users, it's fine to use the same style of your hover state as on your focus state. But when thinking about the types of users that are gonna be using the focus state, then it's important to make sure the focus state is also really clear and, and as easy to understand where, where they are on the page. I thought gov.uk would be a great resource just to give an example of a brilliant use of focus states. So as you can see on these buttons here and you know just generally as I hover around, it's quite, you know, as a as a mouse user, it's quite easy to see where I am and all the rest of it. But if we start to tab onto the page, you can see they've really taken advantage of a bright, easy to um, see focus state on all their elements. So just to show that when, when it comes to like government websites and, and things like that, they're, they're more tuned in to the use of focus states. As you can see, this is an example I have and I've set a hover state um, on the link here, if I go to this, go to my hover state, um, I can set a hover state to kind of um, grow the border, animation on that, transitions, uh, capacity, uh, box shadow. Here we go, so there we go. So for most users, this is fine. Um, not only am I intending on clicking this link so, um, so it's clearer to me where I am, the mouse is changing icon and then you're getting my, my styling taking place. But if we navigate this website in the same way a keyboard user would navigate, what you can see is when we tab onto it, you'll see a blue outline around the uh, link. And that's the browser trying to make up for the fact that we, we don't or we're unlikely to set a, a focus state on our elements. Um, so this is fine, but it doesn't really suit the aesthetic of, of the rest of our page. So let's look into how we can modify the focus state and, and make it look nice. So back in our editor, uh, we click on the link and then once again, we click on the um, link block and we go to our focus state. And here, I'm probably gonna, once again, just blow up that, um, the, uh, the, the box shadow there. Probably gonna add a border, just to kind of help it stand out a little bit. Um, you know, I'm really thinking about users who, who are using the tab and they wanna clearly and easily see where they are on the page. And what I'm also gonna do is probably just gonna take our blue and maybe make it like this. 
And then if I just add another transition there so that my font color nicely um, transitions. And what you'll see is that when we preview this and tab onto it, then you'll see my changes. Unfortunately, the blue border is still kind of visible when we focused on the element. And the back in our editor, when we look at our focus state, you'll see that actually our border's there, but it's black. So what's, what's kind of going on here? Well, what you're seeing is what they call an outline. And to get rid of this in Webflow, we need to use some custom code. Now, I'm, not, I'm gonna do this in the browser because I encourage a lot of um, experimentation and kind of messing around in the browser before then committing it to Webflow. So I'm gonna kind of go, go by that ruling there. Um, if you don't know how to add custom CSS into your Webflow project, then I'll leave a link in the card so that you can, you can take a look at that. So if I right click and click on inspect here, and click on my link. Within Chrome, I can set my um, focus state and there you'll see the blue border is, is there. Um, what I wanna do is essentially put outline is none. And there we go. This is applied in the browser. It's not committed to my Webflow project, but it allows me to kind of see how that is. So if I tab off of this now, um, so what's happened is that, that Webflow has added a class for some reason there to when it's focused. But as you can see, when I hover over it, it's like this, but when I tab on it, there is a bit clearer, a bit easier to see. And then I tab off of it, tab onto it. So it's a lot easier to see. So there we go. I hope you enjoyed this episode. I hope it was helpful in explaining what the uh, focus state is, um, how we can manipulate it within Webflow, and then how really we should properly be handling it when bearing in mind accessibility users and and what they call pro users um, that use the keyboard to navigate your um, the, your websites. So if you like this episode, give it a thumbs up. Um, and once again, if you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe and hit that bell notification icon. And until next time, happy no coding.